shut in. This film is a psychological thriller from the folks over at the Daily Wire. That's right, Ben Shapiro and his crew produced this film. And you know what? Hollywood should be shaking in their boots because they have turned conservative filmmaking on its head with this immaculately well done film. And it stars Rainy Qualley, Jake Horowitz, and a sinister Sammy played by Vincent Gallo. It's directed by DJ Caruso with a fabulous score by the Mondo Boys and writing credits to Melanie Toast. This film, again, is fabulous. And we're gonna talk about this in my next conservative take. If you are unfamiliar with the way I do my movie reviews, then please click the link right here and that will explain everything. Also be mindful that there will be an extensive spoiler section. So if you don't wanna know anything about the film, then skip over that and go right to the end and it will be indexed in the description below. So the film Shut In from 2022 is a film about a woman who is a mother of two who has a sketchy past. In fact, she's got some pretty bad things that happened to her and she's trying to do the best she can to raise her two kids. Unfortunately, as she's progressing out of her life and moving away from the dark side of her past, she has her estranged husband or father of her kids who is still in the picture and even worse, a buddy of his named Sammy who tags along too and do bad things to her. And so the film, based on the trailer alone, you'll see she is locked into a cellar and she's shut in. And the whole film is taken from her perspective and it is terrifying. It is a psychological thriller of the likes I haven't seen in quite a while. And you know, obviously I'm biased to films like this. It's from the Daily Wire. They are a conservative outlet. I like what they do over there. So I am biased. However, I am trying to be as impartial as possible and this film is incredible. At, just from watching the trailers alone, you should see the reviews early on, even from secular media, is saying that this film has potential. It has Oscar-worthy cinema photography. The score of the Mondo Boys is chilling. The acting is fascinating. And the element of which the suspense is driven is very unique. Very unique. And from a perspective, if you're a mother of kids, this will be horrifying. It's like a horror film in many, many ways. And it has some violence too. And it has some profanity. This is not your typical conservative Christian based film. But that being said, because of the perspective that it's given, I'm only gonna give the story a six because it's pretty much a single set film. However, again, there's not much complexity, but the drama comes from the psychological element. And we'll get more into that when we get into our spoiler section a little bit later. For the emotional impact of this film, I almost gave it a 10, but I'm gonna give it a nine because it is, could be a little bit more, but I'm glad it didn't because it involves children. So I'm leaving it at a nine, but it could have been a little bit worse in terms of intensity, but it's a very powerful film. Again, we'll talk about that in my conservative take section. So for the categories of intangibles, I'm gonna give Shut In an eight because of three reasons. One is gonna be the acting, I thought it was phenomenal. Two, the screenplay was great, the writing. Melanie Toast did a fantastic job but also the score was fantastic because that to me is a separate character in and of itself. The Mondo Boys did a fabulous job. These guys did a film called Fat Man starring Mel Gibson back in the day. And if I had to throw an honorable mention in there as well, I'd say the directing by DJ Caruso, who had done episodes of The Shield back in the day and also produced Point of No Return starring Bridget Fonda, which is a film I love going back in the 90s. And so this film is highly produced. It looks like a Hollywood film. It acts like a Hollywood film and it has language like a Hollywood film. More on that a little bit later. The music is fantastic. It has a Hitchcock, literally a Hitchcock type feel and vibe to it. I'm not just saying this, but the perspective of the mother being behind closed doors and being helpless and having bad people around with their kids upstairs helpless. To me, it's a fascinating and very original concept. And I, this film, if you're a parent, you're going to just freak out on this whole thing. You're going to freak out. And I think the kids did a good job, even though a lot of times they were voice acting because you hear them, you know, talking behind the door and her giving them instructions. It's just a really good film. And it's got some, I'll get more on that a little bit later, but an eight for intangibles. I really enjoyed it. And for the category watchability, I'm going to give this film an eight. It keeps you glued to the screen, even though you want to turn away 
But you do want to find out what happens to this mother and the kids and the bad guys because they're despicable. So an eight for watchability. Now for the overall score for this film, I'm going to give Shut In an eight. And what I failed to mention in my watchability score was that you're going to want to tell other people about this, whether they're Christian or non-Christian, or if they don't like these types of movies or not, you're going to want to have them sit down and watch this film because I think they're going to be impressed by what they see because this film is really groundbreaking because it doesn't follow the guidelines of a Christian conservative based film. No, this is a Hollywood film through and through without the Hollywood money, without the Hollywood other stuff that I mentioned in the conservative take section. But it's a fascinating piece. And again, it's original too. So it's not like you just do something against the wall to see if it's going to stick. This thing sticks big time. And the eight for overall score puts up there way high for me for my list of films this year so far. This is the conservative take section, which will include spoilers. So if you don't want to know anything about the film specifically, then please skip over to the next part and we will continue on. If you want to stick around and know more, understand this first and foremost, this film is not woke, which is really refreshing. It's good to sit back and watch a film knowing that there's not going to be any of that crap being pushed your way. Stuff that's going to be in a film that has nothing to do with the plot. It's just meant to push an agenda just to basically make you upset. And that's not there. And so number one, that's the best thing about this film. And if the Daily Wire is going to make films like this, if this film here is an indication of what we can expect from the Daily Wire and other companies that are going to do the same thing, because I think this film will be very successful and we have a bright future ahead and we don't even need Hollywood anymore because this film is so highly produced with Hollywood's quality, writing, directing, acting, cinema photography at a low budget, mind you, but that would get better as more money comes in and people like Gino Carano comes in and does films, then the sky's the limit. And so we are detached now from the East and West Coast. And now we're making quality films out of middle America, which I can't be happier about. And so there's nothing about this film that's woke. So there's nothing really to talk about other than the fact that if you watch the film, be mindful. There are cuss words. There is violence. People getting burned. People getting stomped on. It's highly intensive in terms of the mental aspect of it, because as a parent, you're going to be horrified at what you see and what you feel. Because again, you are in that closet with her. They don't jump out of her perspective. It's all through her eyes. And so you don't know what's going on with the kids. You hear them moving around. You hear them crying. You hear them whining. You hear them riding the bicycle going across and seeing the wheels at the bottom of the door. That's it. But you also hear and see the bad guys under the door and talking to her. And when she's outside the door, hitting her, abusing her and causing psychological warfare on her because she's got a bad past of drug abuse. And so temptation is there. And for those reasons, I would say go with caution because if you're thinking it's going to be a happy go lucky Christian film, it's not. And you could be surprised, but it's not woke. And that's the reasons why I would say that you should go, but go with caution because it does have a hard PG 13 light R type feeling in terms of its content. And I don't want to go through all of it for you because, you know, this is a spoiler section, but I don't want to give everything away. You need to see this film and you need to share it with others because we need to encourage filmmakers like DJ Caruso and Melanie Toast, who's the, the writer of this film, to encourage them to do more. And again, the Mondo Boys and the soundtrack, the score is just fabulous. It haunts you. It's amazing. I'm done talking about this film. Go check it out. So for shut in, I'm going to give this 15.75 out of 20, which will give you a 3.5 star film, which is phenomenal and a go with caution for the reasons mentioned in the conservative take. This film is wonderful. It's like I said, again, groundbreaking, impressive. I was totally blown away by this number one, because I had no idea this film was even going on, someone had texted me saying, Hey, can you check out this film? And I heard about it. I said, well, go, let me go check it out. So I watched it on YouTube for free and I was just like, wow, I was not prepared for this. And so 
that's it. So I'm sure Daily Wire is gonna have a way for you to watch it. I'm not sure yet. So I just wanna get out here and do this review. Take a check it out for yourself. But what say you? Have you seen Shut In? What do you think about it? Was it too violent? Was it too hard to get through? Or were you just totally impressed by the fact that it wasn't woke and that it was telling a story that was refreshing in the sense that you didn't have to worry about an agenda being pushed down your throat? Let me know in the comments below. I'd be curious to know what you think. And if you like what we do on this channel, we take pop culture and politics and filter to you in a conservative manner, then please check out some more content that we have for you right now.